Hi, my name is John Stone and I work for Eco Drive Transmissions. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove and refit a complete GS3 unit. Obviously when this is in the vehicle you have a pneumatic ears feed into the pressure regulator here that you'll have to remove, a electrical connection from the clutch actuator just here and an electrical connection from the vehicle wiring harness just here so they'll need to be removed prior to releasing the actual GS3. What we first need to do is remove the 13 head bolts, all 15 of them. I'm just going to crack all of them and remove them all completely. Doesn't matter what order you do this in, you just need to release them all. Right, so that's them all loosened, so we're just going to remove the bolts. You'll find the ones at the front end of the housing are longer than the ones at the rear end, so if you want to separate them for ease of fitment later. Something else what makes it easy to fit is by removing the lid from the bottom half so you can see three out of the four location pegs you need to whip when refitting it. So what I'm going to do is actually remove the lid from the bottom half. That's done by removing the two T30 Torx screws in the centre of the shift actuator. Remove them completely and put them to one side. What I'm going to do now is lift up the pressure regulator and slot the lid into its own orifice as provided. All we need to do then is be really gentle and careful with these ribbon connectors by just rocking them out of the plugs. What that does is releases the upper half from the lower half so you can put that to one side. Because all the bolts have been removed, then what you can do is remove the actual bottom half of the shift actuator. Like that. Right, prior to fitting the service exchange shift actuator, what we need to do is align all of the pistons. Now when you purchase one of these shift actuators from Eco Drive Transmissions, these pistons can be set in any position all of them. The range change is the hardest one to move because that's the biggest piston. But you have four locations that you need to hit basically when fitting the GS3. This one, this one, this one and this one and they correspond to these keys inside the gearbox. What you also need to do is make sure you do not move this, the central piston for the gearbox in and out. So what you need to do is just make sure it's in the neutral position. Now that's key to certain vehicles being able to start once you've fitted this, because if it detects that it's in a, an in-gear position, the vehicle will not start. So you need to make sure it's in the neutral position. What we're going to do now is move to the bench and just show you how to set the actual pistons into the relevant position of the one you've just taken off. Right, so I've purchased my service exchange shift actuator from EcoDrive Transmissions. What I need to do now is set the pistons for each one, the splitter, the main gearbox and the range change to the relevant positions of the failed one which has just come off. So all I'm going to do is measure each individual one. So the splitter set at 43 millimetres. The range change Set at 44. The central one, you can actually feel the neutral position as you push it in and out. 
should be set just there. This is school check confirms that that is in the relevant position. So, my ship actuator is set, relevant to the old one. In theory, our replacement actuator should fit straight on to the gearbox. Okay, so we're back to the gearbox. So hopefully our replacement unit uh, is set to the relevant positions of the shift rails. Just making sure it's still in the neutral position, nobody's moved that. So what I'm going to do with the aid of a couple of studs is just locate these into the housing. This is just to give assistance to aligning the gasket and the housings when we're offering them up. Any GS3 product, shift actuator product, purchased from EcoDrive comes with new gaskets. Okay, so what we're going to do now, set that in the neutral position. We have our shift actuator and locate them using the studs down onto the main gearbox. There we go, just a little tweak there. What we're doing now is just pressing down on the spring-loaded bit to make sure the two housings actually meet. And that gives me confidence that I've hit with all three positions. What you don't want to do is assume that you've aligned it and then tighten the bolts down because if you do that you can actually break housings and crack things. So we've got them aligned so what we're going to do now is put the intermediate gasket in position. Again a new one is these is supplied of the unit. We've got that in position by the use of the studs. We're going to take the upper off, which houses the brain, and reconnect the two ribbon connectors. Again, being careful, lower the upper off onto the studs, and slowly lower onto the gearbox. First of all, what I'm going to do is put these two torque part, uh, bolts in position just to uh, hold the gasket in the relevant position so that doesn't move. I'm not going to torque these until the last moment. And we get our ring of bolts. As I mentioned earlier, the longer ones go to the front end of the GS3 shift actuator. And the shorter ones go to the rear. Take your two studs out, now you've got your bolts in place because the gasket will not move. put the two remaining bolts in position. You can go round. What I tend to do with these, because this is spring loaded, just go either corner to start with. Just watch it lower down. Into position. Right, so that should be the GS3 secured. What we need to do now is torque all the bolts up to the relevant setting. Now the outer bolts are torqued to 23 newton meters, which I've already set on the uh, torque wrench itself. So I'm just going either corner again, and then I'm gonna go round them all. Then what I need to do is torque these two. These are only 10 newton meters, but I do these last. So the main bolts take actually the uh, lowering of the housing. Just need to reset the torque wrench. So 10 newton meters. As you will see, this won't take a lot. 
Okay, so that's the GS3 uh, secured back on the gearbox. Obviously on the vehicle, what you'll need to do then is reconnect your electrical connections to the vehicle, the clutch actuator, and also your pneumatic uh, air feed into the uh, GS3 uh, pressure regulator. If you're changing the complete unit, then obviously you may need that programming relevant, relevant to the vehicle. Uh, if you're just changing the bottom off, then that uh, is, is the original off the vehicle, so it will not need programming to the vehicle. Okay, so that concludes how to fit a GS3 onto a ASTRONIC gearbox. Uh, to see more videos and aspects of our work, please visit our website www.ecodrive.co.uk